So, uh, my name is Dan Govark, and I'm professor at PCC, long time, and uh, a member of the Multicultural Committee. And the Multicultural Committee puts on programs to deal with different I issues of social inequality, which of course you're studying in your class, and um, one of those issues has to do with gender differences, and differences between men and women, and some of the ways in which women are denied equal opportunity in our society. And um, so this is a, something we try every year to have at least one program that addresses this issue. And in the month of March is Women's History Month, so we try to do it in March. And of course, we still got a couple of days left, so we made it. <laughs> um, so we have a great speaker today who can talk about this topic. Her name is Kim McGinnis. She's a professor at Bridgewater State University, uh, teaches courses in this subject, and is an expert. Um, on the subjects that she's going to be talking about. She's going to be addressing the issues of workplace inequality and also the representation of women in the media and the connection of that to workplace inequality. So I'm going to introduce Kim McGinnis. Thank you. <laughs> okay, usually how I'd like to do this is, and you don't have to, but I will talk, I have no trouble talking, but if you have questions or comments during, feel free to raise your hand, okay? So I, I don't have to stand here and talk for an hour and you, you get bored. I don't think you'll be bored, but if you have, you know, if you disagree or if you want to add something, it's okay. Nothing bothers me. Just put your hand up. So um, as he said, my focus generally will be on gender inequality in the workplace and obviously the females will be the topic because females are generally paid less than males across the board in any occupation you know measured against their male counterparts so um, there's a lot of reasons for that it's very complex um, but you know I'll start off by telling you that Females make 77 cents per every male dollar, but, and that really only refers to white females, and females of color make even less. 70% um, of females in this country work, whether that's full-time or part-time. Uh, most women work. Um, and the, ma the majority of women, and it, it is changing, but the majority of women work in occupations that are would, might be considered traditionally female, like nursing, teaching, social work. Um, and those types of occupations are usually not as valued or paid as well as the ones that males generally enter into, whether it be um, business, um, it, um, computer related, plumbing, electrician, any job, usually, though male-dominated jobs are paid much more than female-dominated jobs. Now, do you have any reason, any reason why you think that might be? Can you think of any reason? In terms of, if you th think about gender, yes. Maybe strength. They need. Like, uh, I don't really know how to explain it, but mm -hmm. guys are looked at more as like the the dominant. Strong men, and they can do more jobs than women. No, I know what you. I know what you mean. They can do different types of jobs. <laughs> yes, that's the answer. But no, you're you're right. Think about a police officer or a firefighter, for example. People assume that women can't do those jobs, but um, yes. If you think about it from like a back in the day kind of perspective. Yeah. Correct. Yes. Somebody else? Well, from the problems of part of what he was saying, too, that females were to provide for the family in different ways. They would stay home and cook and take care of the right. family. Right. Right. Raise the children. So, because of that, you, th you think that's why female jobs outside of the home are less valued? Yes. Yeah. Because the females are the more, I guess, like more like the weaker you know, of the two parties. And um, I guess they have more like a, um, like a less, um, I don't want to say like 
um, they're not as smart, like not like that as smart as guys, but I guess, you know, like the inequalities come from that like, they can't bring as much to the table. Right. So it's a matter of perception. I'm not saying right that you're all correct. Every, all your points are valid. And what's interesting about it is they're all valid points and they're very popular perceptions, but they're all unfair. You understand what I mean by that? Because of the perceptions of women general, generally like you said back in the day or you know, initially if you look at what I call sexual scripts, you know, that we're given scripts um, when we're born, not literally, you know, how to act as a female, how to act as a male, and they're different. And because males are expected to be breadwinners or at least make more money than their female partners, um, it appears that their jobs are more important. And I think you might have been trying to say that male jobs appear to be more demanding so that female jobs look easier, but they're not. Do you agree? Do you females are more docile than right. Gender. And so when, when I speak of gender inequality in the workplace, I'm, I'm generally talking about, you know, outside of the home. But if you, if you include domestic labor, women's labor lives are very demanding. And, um, of course, that's not paid labor. Um, but those assumed roles, um, you know, the traditional scripts of femininity, although we know they're changing, they're still kind of holding women back in, in the workplace or else we wouldn't be paid 77 cents per every male dollar. It would be fair because all of the jobs, you know, are important. Um, but I, it's the perception of masculinity and femininity that I think um, is the biggest problem and you know they are they're the most divisive factors when you think about it in determining how we act with others around us I mean we we act according to our gender you know we see our the world through a gendered lens so you know if a a female officer police officer walked in here right now you would see her as female first an officer second, you, you, wouldn't you? Same as a firefighter. So we really use gender um, to, you know, categorize how we think about people, and obviously we use it to um, know how to act and to react, etc. Et the problem is it's not biological. Sometimes we think it is. Um, a lot of people think that mothers um, are um, biologically better parents than fathers, which is not true. That you know, obviously there are a lot of women who should not be mothers, and there are a, a lot of uh, fathers who are better parents than mothers. So, as a cultural pattern, if it was natural, there wouldn't be so many exceptions. But I think because we think it's natural. We expect women to be more domestic than men, so they really don't get as much opportunity outside of the home to, you know, participate as much in the work field as men do. So, um, you know, I, I, you would think in, in 2013 it would change, and like I said, there have been changes, but usually females are perceived as caretakers first and laborers outside of the home second. So that would be their secondary role. Um, and you know that's again reflected in a lot of the occupations that um, women choose. And um, because um, of the occupations they choose which are not as valued as predominantly male occupations, they're not paid as well. Now I'm not saying that peop women or men, but particularly women, should not be teachers or nurses or social workers. Or, I'm not saying that. What I'm, what I'm arguing is that those jobs should be paid as well as, you know, any other job. It, they're just as important as any other job. So. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with traditionally female occupations. In fact, we're, we're starting to see a mix anyway of, you know, there's more male nurses, you know, and of course females are entering more and more corporate um, positions or corp, corp, 
corporate jobs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And you know, it's not just about females. I want to make that clear. That although I don't know if you're learning this in school, that you know, the United States is often described as a male-dominated society. That that doesn't mean that individual males are the problem. You know, it means that, you know, we live in a social world where males happen to benefit more from inequality than women. Eric? Could you elaborate a little bit on, on patriarchy? On that? on that whole, well, in, in, what, in what way? Just how it supports everything else. It what? I'm sorry? It supports everything else. All the other discrimination kind of Yeah, I mean. By using just by using the term male dominated, you mean? Well, yeah. Explain. Do you explain or elaborate on how patriarchy as a set of power relations? Yes. Well. Holds everything in place. Do you you know what patriarchy is? Obviously, right? You do. Okay. They hear it. They hear it. They only for me. Okay. Well, it, it literally means rule of the father. That's literally what it means. And when I say we live in a male-dominated society, that means that we're living in a society where um, most of our ideas um, come from um, a traditionally male perspective regarding gender, and that um, even if you look at the sexual scripts that I referred to earlier, um, they were basically developed um, by males. Um, males are in positions of power in, in the, across the world, but in the United States um, that are somewhat um, very difficult for women to even, you know, integrate into in politics and, um, you know, especially corporate America. And, you know, I say that you, you know, I'm trying to explain that you can't blame individual males, though, because f females collude to some degree by, you know, going along with the sexual script or, you know, being sexist or, um, you know, they support kind of the, the, the predominant, ma you know, type of society that we live in where males are generally the leaders. So if males generally lead, uh, you know, the, all of our social institutions, then that leaves females out or behind. And we get this set of ideas about how we should act based on the idea that males are valued more than females um, and that maybe males are more important. You know, I don't know if that's what you meant when you asked me that question. Well, just, yes. yes. Did you want to add to that? No, okay. So, um, you know, it's, it's everywhere. Um, but one of the areas that I find very interesting is connecting gender inequality in the workplace to media representations of females. And um, that, that, that's just one aspect, that's one social institution that really is very powerful with regard to um, affecting women's position in the workplace. Can you think of any reasons why? Think about female representations in the media in terms of, you know, on television, music videos, magazines. So what's the message though? That, that that's what they should be concerned with? Is that what you're saying? I yes, well, you're right. <laughs> okay. What were you going to say? Kind of elaborating on that, um, just the general sex appeal you see on uh, TV, especially, especially a lot of alcohol uh, commercials, um, and then music videos and stuff. Yeah. Like that as well. Yeah. So if you think about, you know, I could go connect gender inequality in the workplace to most social institutions, but I'm sticking to the media because. I find it the most interesting because it's the most powerful socializer for us right now in society. I mean, everything is media related. You know, you all have phones. You know, uh, you probably sleep with them. Um, you, you do, don't you? 
Yeah, my son does. Um, they actually make cell phone bed buddies now. Did you know that? You tuck it under your mattress and there's a pocket there in case it vibrates during the night. Oh yeah. Um, but there's, you know, there's the internet, there's the television, there's the video games, there's the music videos, the radio, you know, you listen, um, magazines. Think of all the representations of females. Think of how they are represented. So, you know, if you wanted to make a general statement, you would think about this. How many, first of all, how many of you watch advertisements? Oh, more than the last class. Mo most people skip over them. You know, they go on to something else. If you can't, <laughs> well, uh, try maybe for maybe 15 minutes sometime to just let it go and watch advertisements, depending on the channel. Could be the music channel, could be just the regular channels. Any advertisement that involves women has to do with cooking, cleaning, or beauty, or they're sexually exploited in some other way. Think about it. Males are not presented that way. Males are usually presented in generally serious roles. They're not, they don't appear to be as concerned about their appearance. There are no anti-aging creams for men you know, that we know of. Um, you know, there's no, um, the men aren't obsessed with cleaning. Uh, you don't see a lot of commercials with men cooking. There are always exceptions, but as a cultural pattern, women are, are portrayed as domestic and sexualized in magazines as well. In music videos, disgustingly sex sexist. And I know some of you might like that, but it's, you know, the point is that, you know, they're being objectified to make a living. Um, so, um, that is going to be my connection today. The media displays very limited images of women and that influences their positions in, in occupations and it influences to some extent what occupations they might want to um, participated. So we get the sense that, um, you know, if we look at all of this, really look at all of this, we get the sense that women are just overly content with domestic tasks, you know, and they, they're just so happy in these roles. They're smiling, they're, you know, does anyone ever see a Swiffer ad? Do you know what a Swiffer is? You have a Swiffer. <laughs> well, Swiffer, Swiffer ads are, are, are among the worst if you look at them. And I'll, there's a couple, it, it infuriates me. Um, very few, yes, yeah, there's one. The worst, is, the worst one is showing a, a woman cleaning with a Swiffer, dressed like this. No one dresses like this to clean perfectly her makeup is perfect her hair is perfect and they show her cleaning and when she's finished she picks up a book and says do you, do you know this one uh, I'm gonna read one of these as if how does she not know what a book is so it makes her look stupid as well I know you've never thought about it that way right because it's not pointed out and usually we're not taught to deconstruct what's really happening, it's, you know, or engage in media literacy, as I call it. That's what she does. There's another one, a Swiffer ad, where it shows this woman obsessively cleaning furniture, and at the end of the ad, a male comes up to her and takes the Swiffer and, and says, um, okay, I, I think that's enough, or something like this, and then it shows her in a furniture store. Like, she can't control herself she wants to use the Swiffer so badly, she wants to clean so much that she's cleaning a whole furniture store. Who does that? No. Exactly. And they do. But if, think of the images. All the, the, the advertisements about cooking generally show women. All the diet ads generally portray women. 
you know, that the focus is on their bodies, not their brains, you know, and all of these big celebrities that people like, Jennifer Hudson, Jessica Simpson, Marie Osmond, I don't even know if you're old enough to know who that is, you know, they all do the diet ads all about women as if there are no fat men. <laughs> it's so sexist. So uh, once again, you, if you look at it and really think about it, the message is your body cook and clean. So it goes back to what you were saying about, you know, that we're still kind of relegated to that domestic sphere. No? Okay. So, and other ones are, I mean, I could go on because I, this is one of, content analysis is one of my areas where I actually, you know, study commercials and not just about women, about men too. I'm not saying men are not unfairly treated, that they are, but we're talking about females right now. Um, I'll give you another one. Do you, do you ever watch the Activia ads? Yeah. I, there's one ad in particular where Jamie Lee Curtis um, is talking about their, you know, problems. Mm -hmm. They need Activia. And um, the way the commercial is set up is that they're going to have a girls' night out eating Activia. <laughs> You look for that. You watch for that. That's what those words are said. Girls night out. How many of you are going out this Friday taking Activia with you? <laughs> no one, right? And males have digestive problems as well. There's problems. Uh, Northern, quilted Northern. This is the last example I'll give you. It's toilet paper. Did you ever see this one? It's, a, it's a, once again focusing on women and their bodies and the women are very serious. There's four or five of them talking about how they're so happy that they have Quilted Northern because it's very important to stay clean down there. Those are the words they say. And, and I'm watching the ad thinking, I, I can't even believe this is happening. And then I'm, I'm thinking to myself, so males don't smell? like. Seriously, so again, it's insulting. It makes women look stupid. And it goes back again to the focus on their bodies. The cosmetic commercials are endless. You know, lipstick for everything. Um, makeup. makeup, just in general, hair products. Um, you know, anti-aging is the biggest one. Mascara, so you can have the longest lashes in the world. Um, you know, it goes on and on and on. So there's, there are very few images, not just on television, in magazines, in videos, you know, messages on the radio that direct women away from their bodies and the domestic sphere. You get what I'm saying? And, I, and people usually don't sit back and think about it unless, you know, you're told to. <laughs> the highest paying female jobs in this country are movie stars and top models. They're the highest paying occupations for females in the United States. Obviously require women to use their bodies to make a living. They obviously require women to starve themselves to make a living. Um, oh no, it isn't good. No, it isn't. <laughs> but what's, what's even more discouraging is that a lot of people look up to a lot of these celebrities who do these ads, but they're basically telling women that they're defective and that they, you know, they need to do these things to fix themselves instead of encouraging becoming an actress, becoming the head of a CEO of a corporation, running for office, you know, you can still wear lipstick and run for office. Um, but for the most part, the focus is on looks once again. Um, sadly, American women spend more money on cosmetics slash cosmetic surgery and diet programs than education. What? <laughs> me up. More women go to university than males right now. It's only 51%, you know, it's not much of a difference. 
cosmetics, cosmetic surgery, and diet program all together. So we're not even encouraged, you know, to focus. I know you're focusing on education now, but at the same time, do you ever see a, a ton of advertisements about women going to, you know, secondary institutions? There's a few, but not a lot. Like online schools and things like that. You know, at the same time, it's not as pervasive as, you know, making sure you look perfect. But even with the online schools, it still gives that other stereotype. They have to go to an online school because they have to take care of the family. That's a great point. Yeah. Except males are also encouraged, too. But that, that is a really good point. I can't remember. It could, yeah. But, you know, I'm not saying this is hopeless, obviously, as women become more educated. Um, in particular areas, you know, there, there can be change, regardless of the job. Women should be paid equal to their male counterparts. But I think we don't earnestly, uh, you know, we, we don't really think enough or deeply about um, the differences in the ways that males and females are perceived and how it affects, you know, the jobs women choose or how they're pay paid in the workplace. And that can only be changed if you are aware of it and you make a lot of noise about it. I don't know how important this is, but what you're saying about the commercials is true with, like, women being attached to cleaning. Why wouldn't it be Mrs. Clean instead of Mr. Clean? I know. Well, I, I have an answer for that. Because this is just my answer. It's just, I thought of it myself. Because that commercial is showing that the tough cleaning has to be done by a male. Because they show the muscle, Mr. Clean, you get the tough stains out. It's a little sexist. Yeah. Yes, but he's helping her because it's a tough stain. I said, this is just my take on it. I could be wrong. I, I, I analyze the crap out of everything, so. <laughs> um, but one of the ways, education is very important, but you know, you have to, part of that education, a huge part of that education has to be media literacy because we are obsessed with the media, forms of media. It controls our lives right now. Um, this was in the media recently. Um, Yahoo's CEO, Marissa something, yeah. she, um, kind of like the women that have worked there because she's been called to this big job and she said that there's no more working from home. She made in the media made a big deal. And um, it was like the, the female people like, you know, that wanted equality were mad that she did it. Like you know, on the media anyway. Yeah. So it was like thinking like, isn't that like kind of backwards? Like Well, I think like sort of it was right after she had her baby, I think, is what you're talking about. And she went back to work very uh, quickly. No, it was. Um, is this a, a recent? Was, no, this is a more recent thing. Oh, it's a more she recent made, one. She made an across the board decision for Yahoo that, you know, people, no more. Oh, work. no one could work from home. No, I thought you meant her. No, oh, no, okay. Just, okay. Like, you know, yeah. Across the board, and, but she was criticized. Well, and, and that's one of the issues. Um, in one of my other classes that I teach about there's nothing wrong with working in the domestic sphere or working at home whatever you're doing whether it's you're doing your job outside job at home or you're you're doing domestic labor that the issue is it's not valued anything domestic is not valued so she is probably doing that because she wants people outside of the domestic sphere it doesn't look like they're working as much as if they were out in it, outside the home. I think the argument was, was that she's a woman and she was making it hotter on, like, stay home mom. Right, women, yes, you know, yeah. I thought that's what you were alluding to. And, but that's where, it, that's where it gets tricky because, you know, I don't see anything wrong with somebody who chooses to, to stay home with their children, whether it's a male or a female. I, you know, that's their business. The problem is the way that it's used against them at some point. 
you know, that, you know, you're out of the workforce because you stayed home with your kids, so you're kind of behind the times. And women, a lot of times, aren't taken as seriously in, especially in corporate positions, because people think that if they have children and the child is sick, the mom's going to go home. The mom's going to call in sick. Um, or if women work part-time, they're not as dedicated to their job. And that's all related back to perceptions of what females should be doing. Somebody had their hand up. Oh, yeah. Wasn't it like part of the reason that people were particularly upset because she actually built a nursery within like hmm. the area that she worked? Uh, yeah, I don't know the story. It sounds interesting, yeah. She has like a nanny and she has her own nursery, so mm -hmm. the female workers are finding her pretty hypocritical. Is it just for her, the nursery? Yeah. Because hmm. a lot of corporations now are building daycare centers in their buildings so that people can have their children right there. So I didn't know that, no. I don't know much about her. I just remembered there was some hoopla when she had the baby. Um, and, and that could be... You know, that, that's an, an kind of, that's really a very individual example, but I, I understand exactly what you're saying. Um, so, um, I think a very important arena for change to be made, real change, is, is the political arena. I've always, you know, besides education, education is always number one. The political arena is important because we don't have a lot of female political leaders or a lot of male political leaders who push pay equity. You know what I mean? They don't focus on it enough. And po politics is the area where, where change can be made. It, unfortunately, women are under, underrepresented in that field as well. You know, they only comprise 17% of Congress. In the United States, there have only been 34 female governors and 2,314 male governors. Um, not a lot of female leaders. The U.S. is the only developed country that has never had a female president. That's pretty interesting for a democratic society. So, we've always had male presidents and when we uh, what am I trying to say? When we focus on his wife, because he's, you know, most likely to have one or he wouldn't be elected, what do we focus on about the first lady? Her looks. Her looks, don't we? What dress is she going to wear in the inaugural ball? You know, um, how she dresses, what shape she's in, and, you know, oh my God, she has bangs now. That was a top story. She has bangs. That is serious. But, but the way it was presented was, oh, you know, several stations focused on the fact that she has bangs now. So once again, this is my per opinion and perception, makes women look stupid. Um, I think real oh, I do too. Until I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. Um, it might be true, but, you know, it's, it's funny you brought her up because when she was running for vice president, the focus was on her looks constantly. Um, she, yeah, I mean, the focus was not on her brains for a number of reasons. It was mainly on her looks. And, but then... It, whenever there was a focus on Hillary Clinton, it was always very critical, like, you know, she was, it was negative. But Sarah, nothing about her clothes, just her, her attitude, probably because she had some brains. Um, with Sarah Palin, it was more her looks. And they actually would refer to them on some shows as the dits and the bitch, respectively. They, you know, not, on, not even on Saturday Night Live, on CNN, on Bill O'Reilly, et cetera, et cetera. And um, so they weren't even taken seriously when they were running, you know, for politics. Um, but I also think that there is this misconception that women won't devote enough time to politics or the, you know, the same amount of time that men do, which is unfair because we can't just assume that. Um, and, you know, 
above all this, if you think about it, women don't have to stop being mothers or stop being devoted to their families. It just means that in order to have, you know, be more to be more valued uh, or to have access to valued resources in society, we have to be political. And males have to help. You know, males can be more involved in direct family care, which they are, no question about it, that has changed. Um, but we, women need more support from males for pay equity too. You know, so those perceptions have to change. Um, if not, there, there'll always be gen um, gender inequality in the workplace. I mean, it starts at home, you know, when you're really little. You know, think about, you, I don't know if you remember, yeah, think of the toys little girls are given. You know, vacuums that actually work at two years old. Ironing boards, easy bake ovens, kitchen sets, dolls that poop and pee. We're, we're, we're trained in domesticity from the moment we can walk. We're given a doll when we're out of the womb for crying out loud. It's, it's next to you in the crib. So, you know, and then boys, the same, the same pressures there, you know, to be aggressive, to be competitive, to be independent, to be the breadwinner. Um, but the, the difference is that males benefit more from the inequality, obviously, than women do. And we don't question it. You know, we're not pushed as leaders. Um, you know, we're not, you know, if you think of Hollywood, for example, um, women are always looking for love and romance or they're being victimized. Um, if they're portrayed in strong roles, um, they're sexualized. Um, they, you know, they can't be superheroes or top cops and be married at the same time. If you think of that in movies or on shows, you know, um, like Law and Order with Mariska Hargitay, you know, they, you, they don't, it's one or the other. With men, you can be both. So these images are pushed on us all of the time. And, um, you know, if you, if you don't devote most of your attention to the domestic sphere, there's, you know, you're not as great as a mother or wife than the person who does. But women have to work. I mean, let's not kid ourselves. We have, we have to work. And then, if you think about women who work a lot, let, you know, 70 hours a week, say, let's, I work 70 hours a week and my husband works 70 hours a week, and there's, there might be problems with the kids. Who is focused on first? You, you don't know that answer? Hmm? Are you guessing or do you mean it? Yeah. It's the female because, you know, we're supposed to be the mothers, the caretakers. That's changing too, but it's still mainly the female. It's still mainly the female. So if I invited, well, because if you look at it from the male perspective, he works 70 hours a week. He's a good provider. She works 70 hours a week. She's a little neglectful. You know, think about it that way, you know. Don't have kids if you're going to work 140 hours a week is the way I look at it. But if you, let's say I invited you to my house, said, you know, come on over, I'll have some little party, and you all walked in and my house was like really messy. Who would you think of first? You. Why? Because you're messy. No, you don't know that I'm messy. <laughs> because I'm what though? Lazy. <laughs> Thank you. Are you saying because I'm female? You're not saying because I'm female. Is that what you meant? Yeah, okay, okay, okay. So you, no, I, did, I wasn't sure if you were being funny. Um, you would think of me first, right? You would think, oh my God, I can't believe she lets the house go like this. No one would think, oh my God, her husband is such a slob. Never, would never happen. Do you get the perception? We don't even think about it. It's, we're so well culturally conditioned to think like this that we, we don't even see it or feel it unless it's pointed out. That limits women's participation in the workforce, you know, to the extent we're there as successful. Um, I would think of you because, like, in my example, because you were the one who invited people over, 
Uh, that's fair, but no. But both of us. Let's say both of us were there, though. <laughs> like we both walked in with you. Yeah. That no. That there are exceptions, but if we look at it as a cultural pattern, most people would think either she should have done it or made arrangements for someone to do it. It's kind of like childcare too. So, you know, what we're seeing are very dangerous and limiting images of women. We're, you know, we're not really taken seriously a lot. Um, working outside of the home is, you know, somewhat secondary to worrying about families, to worrying about our bodies, our looks, our sexual ob objectification. You know, that comes often before our jobs. Or you want to, you know, the, the, the emphasis is too much on how you look even if you're, you have a job. And especially the sexual part, like you know, we, I mentioned the hip hop videos earlier, like the, that's really demeaning. But people don't get it. I mean, they don't get that, you know, you don't have to have a job like that to be successful if we were living in an egalitarian society, but women make the most money using their bodies. And that's portrayed, once again, at very young ages. Look, think of the Little Mermaid. Look at how she's dressed. She barely has a bra on. Hmm? She could have a top on, but she has big boobs. Same as a, the one in Aladdin, I can never, Jasmine, same thing sexualize. No, it's not their culture. Listen to you. You know mermaid culture? Uh, no, Disney's bad. And if you think about the, the classics, think about the, the little movies. Oh, there's, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's totally related. Oh, I heard about that. Yeah, I didn't see it, thankfully. Didn't see it. But. Well, that's my whole, that was my next point. Yeah, but if you, exactly. And the other issue is, you know, these are G-rated movies and the, the, the characters are dressed like they should be in R-rated movies. Think about that. You know, and then, um, like you mentioned, you're talking about classic movies like Cinderella, she's a maid, she's doing domestic work, you know, she's gorgeous perfectly, you know, dressed, but she, she cleans. Um, you know, Snow White takes care of the seven dwarfs. She's rescued by her prince. They, all get um, they what? They all get rescued by him. Yeah, Beauty and the Beast. That's, that's an abusive relationship. You know, the message is, if you love him enough, he'll change. Um, you know, they set the stage for women being dependent on males as well, because how many people do you hear I'm waiting for my Prince Charming like that it's nauseating you know sleeping beauty sleeps for a hundred years until some guy whacks through the forest and kisses her <laughs> come on what does that say about women you know it's either we can't take care of ourselves or we need men to do it for us and you know all of this sets the stage for workplace inequality. I don't know if, you're, if I'm really making the connection for you, but it starts really young. And even women who work in the media experience this. You know, Katie Couric, she was the first woman anchor for nighttime news. They focused on her clothes and her legs constantly, not her brains. She's an extremely intelligent woman. You know, how many people checked out Dan Rather's legs? Nobody. His or his clothes. You know, they didn't make him wear a shirt open down to here, you know. They, there's a difference. It's insulting. Um, and there's more than just Katie Couric. I mean, they focus on 
um, what is feminine about them instead of, you know, the brains in their heads. So this is why... Oh, I'm scared to hear it. Go ahead. <laughs> what about Oprah? They did that with her sometimes. She's intelligent, but they always talk about her looks. Yeah. You mean her weight? She talks about her weight. And that's, that's the other thing is, you know, this makes us all obsessed with our weight. Um, so we need to exercise media literacy is my point. I don't know if you will, but the next time you're watching something, I don't care what it is, videos or playing video games, some of them are terrible with regard to women. They're violent. Um, you know, look at advertisements just for a couple of minutes and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. And, and it's not like you'll leave the room and say, oh my God, I'm only good for cooking and cleaning. Um, but I want you to see how pervasive it is. You know, and it, it, it's so pervasive that it is affecting how we are treated in the workplace. You know, assumptions are made about our capabilities. And they're not as valued as the same way as males. So, you know, we have to redefine them. You know, stop buying those darn magazines that have dieting tips like drink this for 48 hours and lose 10 pounds and then faint. Um, <laughs> but it's worth it. Um, get ready for the prom, purge all week. Um, you know, but they, they, all of these magazines focus on how to make women better as if we're defective and you know stop trying to look like airbrush celebrities and having frantic relationships with the Swiffer um, <laughs> and as I say to my daughter for God's sake stop watching the Kardashians <laughs> so insulting I'm sorry one of the worst with regard to women <laughs> it, it, it's so addicting I, I ever everyone says that no, my, my 15 year old watches it occasionally, but, um, well, I'll watch it with her and dissect it and then I ruin it on her, so she'll, she'll turn it off. But do you get my connection? That's, that's my most important, that's what I want you to, to get out of this, is that media connection to it, you know, if anything. And there's other problems why there's, you know, gender inequality. There's other causes, I'm sorry, but that is one that a lot of people don't think about as much. Media is like kind of a tricky one. Because, it is. Because, um, I mean, you put on any news channel, and usually it's like two to one attractive females. To like oh, no man. question. So it's like, you know, it's. Um, so it's but that is like the media, like right? Just, you know, male that, you know, is like top of his class, and, you know, he has a hard time getting a job, and then an attractive woman. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because women, right. I mean, look at sports commentators who are women. They're all attractive. Um, you know, also another sexist thing is that you know those stupid shopping channels that are always done by women? Yeah, well, women are most likely, to, more likely to shop than men. That we're more consuming. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> than, than men. But um, the point is, I guess, you know, kind of to wrap it up is that I think the, the focus is more on our domestic capabilities or our domestic, you know, perceptions of our domesticity that are kind of destroying, you know, pay equity right now. And, you know, and that involves the way we look, how we cook, how we like clean. Remember the way, besides like politics to try to help on like the whole like discrimination thing is through the media because oh, yeah. that, like ever since, you know, television or way before then, you know, it's consumerism. Like that's been going on and how yeah. like, you know, a lot of people are perceptive, I think, that through like, you know, media, because it's controlled so much that that's how they have us and that's how, you know, they, they make I guess make a lot of decisions for, for people because they follow what they see and they like and Well it's supply and demand, what you're saying. And the media is male dominated. It's owned by five men. I'm not joking. The the five major Net, um, media conglomerates are owned by men and you know they can women work for them too though and they control what information and images are disseminated so they're perpetuated like little independent um, networks and you know media agencies we don't even hear about because it's not what people are looking for so that's where it has to change there 
or else it, you know, it'll just continue. I mean, the gap is getting closer with regard to the, um, how women are paid comparison to men, but it's not, it's not close enough. Should be equal. I mean, even across academia, except for state colleges, I don't know what it's like for BCC. You know, we, we had to fight for years and years and years, female professors to be paid the same as male professors. We have the same education. But across academia na nationally, male professors are paid more than female professors. Well, that's always been my question is, they have all these, they have all these um, discrimination laws, but then yet they're able to get away with it. I know. Not paying the, uh, women the same as men. Like, I, I always thought that if a male and a you know, when I was younger, because I, I never had a, um, growing up, I, it was always me and my mother, you know, I always thought women and men could paid the same thing, mm. the same amount. But, you know, as they're getting older, I've clearly learned that's not the case. How do they get away with that in, in one specific job? Well, you, it, in, in our case, we, we had to make a lot of noise, and you know. Sometimes people aren't aware. Is it like a large difference? Depending on the occupation. I mean, I, I wouldn't know for every occupation. Doctors. And I know in... In academia, for example, you can nitpick anything on someone's resume. He has two more publications than she does. You know, do you know what I mean? Like you can, there's ways to, to do it. In a way, yes. Yeah. Well, that's what I, I said. I'm sometimes not even aware of it. And, and the person, the woman, may, may not even realize that she is not paid as well as her male counterpart. Oh, well, it depends on the occupation. With professors, when we were dealing with it, it was ten to 15000 It's a lot of money. You know, I don't know about medical doctors. You just asked me that. It depends on the specialty. So, you know. No. I wouldn't know any. No, it's not an area. I, no. No, unfortunately. So... Like, I mean, there's not, there's little changes, but like in the bigger picture, like, yeah. there, I mean, can't say it like that, but I mean, is there realistically ever going to be like a bigger change? I mean, we never know. We you never, well, that's, I would say, there's certainly been significant changes oh. in the, you know, hundreds of years, but sometimes, I don't know if you feel this way, Eric, but sometimes I feel like we're becoming more conservative. I don't know, that's just my take. I, sometimes I feel like we're going backwards a little bit. Especially when I, I shouldn't spend so much time studying advertisements. <laughs> but, um, you know, I... Hmm? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but it makes you think that, you know, makes you in your head thinking, God, we're not advancing. We're just staying where we are. But I, I have hope that things will change. But, you know, when I mention that we've never had a female president, that, that's pretty discouraging. She didn't run for president. She didn't make the. Uh, she, didn't make the she didn't make the Democratic. Yeah, party. yeah. You know, like, I just thought, I mean, that was pretty close. I mean, that yeah, was maybe. I have a sneaky feeling she's running next. I thought, I she, I thought she was pretty well respected. I just think, she, you know, that she just almost, almost would have. I think she would People, I think that. I think people are afraid of tr change, though, and that would be a drastic change for this country. I think. Yeah, it certainly was. It was a great change, but but I wonder uh, would a black woman be elected though? If you think about it that way, you know. Did somebody else have their hand up up there? No. Any other questions? No. Any other? Yeah. All right. Thanks for having me.